Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Witness Day, we're going to talk about Asus ROG Phone 6 Pro. So let's dive right into it. So what exactly is this ROG series? Well, it's a unique lineup of gaming phone because Asus wanted to jump into the mobile industry and if they were directly tried to take on Apple and Samsung, they would have died flat out. So they took a, a you know unique approach and there is a old saying, there are riches to be made in niches. So they took gaming phone as a niche market. And the idea behind that system was that we're gonna give you the balls to the wall gaming performance, meaning no compromise, don't think about it, just gaming, don't think too much about it. So sustained performance was the key point because there are many SOC that can give you amazing boost performance but because they do not have enough cooling built into it it cannot last it meaning you start the game everything is awesome everything is GG you are getting let's say 120 FPS and then after a while it's like 110 after a while it's like 100 then it's like 60 because again it cannot cool itself so that's the whole point not just performance sustained performance was the key goal here and uh, they will create an ecosystem of accessories that will allow you to do what we call pro gaming meaning you will have controller meaning you will have cooling system meaning you will have uh, dock systems all that system and it started in 18 october 2018 the first one first puppy was released and it's still going strong because again uh, they could have died out which mind you asus did uh, because back in the day they did try with intel to break into mobile market they failed uh, so and this is still going uh, strong and very uh, uh, very successful however the price is going up seriously up so at this point in time the price is ludicrously high that's like in indian currency 90000 rupees that's like a uh, like a good bike you can get second hand or even first hand in some scenarios so it's getting expensive so what about the performance this is one thing that you don't have to you don't have to look up specs you don't have to think about it it's just the best don't think too much about it. like this is one phone that flat out if you have a gaming unless the game was specifically designed for ios and fine-tuned for ios uh, this puppy will bitch slap every phone including iphone and any other phone be it samsung ultra also so in gaming it's like the moment game starts to lose the ram starts to like my time has come to shine the moment your soc is really starts to crank up the cooling system is like now my time to take care of it so that's the whole point flat out fundamentally high horsepower and sustained performance. And they achieve this by using split battery, meaning there is two cells rather than having one giant cell. Now, ideally you want to have one giant cell because the one giant cell has much lower degradation. Meaning if, for example, my phone has 7,000 milliamp hour battery over time, meaning after year two, after year three, how much capacity it would have lost? It would be much slower if you achieved same uh, 7,000 capacity by having two. That's why Apple gives you two batteries because it gives you the capacity, but it makes sure the lifespan is very low of the products. You know, this is what we call a planned obsolescence. It's surprisingly smart. That's why like Apple has like, you know, L batteries. It's like, why you have L batteries? Like that's the one. Now here, they had to do that simply because they want to make sure the processor SOC is cooled. So they can dump the heat directly into the giant as vapor chamber. So they did make the compromise in the battery, but vapor chamber was like, you know, there is a reason for it. Like if you open it up to tear down, it makes sense. Like, so it's much closer to the outside surface and able to dump heat without any issue. And it also has fan based Peltier cooler also. Meaning if you buy this accessories, Aero Active Cooler 6, it can not only run a fan, passively cool it, uh, that only works if you are in an air conditioned environment and ambient temperature is like, you know, lower than the phone case back, then it will work. But if you really need to pull the heat, because be mindful, the case back is not heat pipe, it's not conductive, that, uh, conductive enough. So you have to cool it, meaning you want to drop it below ambient. Let's say your ambient is 20 degrees Celsius. You want this puppy to drop that puppy to around 10. Then heat will soak into it without any issue. So that does require more power. It does require Peltier modules. So that you can do that. If you connect this puppy with power, then you're gonna have OP performance continuously without thinking too much about it. Just like run it, max power, balls to the wall. Don't think too much about it. And one unique thing they did uh, that was Snapdragon 8 uh, Plus Gen 1 is not a new chip. It's already there. Similar chip is being used in the smartphones uh, from the beginning of this year. So it's not like wow kind of system. It's like, yeah, it's there. However, uh, one thing they did, they changed their partner to TSMC rather than Samsung and they have dropped it down to 4 nanometer. Now be mindful. What does that mean? Does that mean this puppy has 10,000 mother performance? No. Uh, performance wise is literally neck and neck, barely a bit better. And the better part would be simply because it has better cooling. So what is the main benefit is the efficiency. Now it consumes less power, meaning it generates less heat, meaning the high, uh, you know, high power cooling system can handle it for much longer. That's the main benefit, meaning your battery life is tangibly good. You will be like, damn, for this high level performance, you can get all day battery life without any issue. So that is really good. So compared to other similar SOC that you can get uh, for that, you know, Snapdragon 8 plus Gen 1, you will be like, 
it is a bit better, tangibly better. Like again, you will notice it, but do not expect to be like, you know, this battery lasts like two hours and this lasts six hours. It's not that much, but it's like uh, five hours versus six hours. And like temperature wise is definitely uh, something that you will notice. So that performance wise, don't think too much about it. It's one of the best gaming phone out there. What were the accessories? Now, here's the deal. Fundamental laws of physics is like, because processor is not doing anything. It's not like a optical module where it's like converting the electrical energy into laser pulse and sending that energy away. It inherently is just a heater. So fundamentally, all the energy it consumes, it turns into heat. So it will thermal throttle. Only question is how quickly. So if you are in cool environment, of course, it's going to last for much longer. If you are not in a cool environment, it will thermal throttle. And the more and more computation you do, more and more power it consumes, inherently it becomes a choking point. So fundamentally, there is nothing can be done unless you add active cooling. Without that, you cannot do anything about it. Now, phone has a second USB-C port for charging and cooling also, because if you're playing in like this, you can poke it from here without any issue. That's awesome. That's why I specified it. This is a gaming specific phone. No other company will give you a second USB-C port. Even though it's useful, they're like, no, this is a dedicated phone. We're going to give you something that other companies are. And that's why that split battery actually makes sense. It's like, you know, because they have to have that USB-C port there. It would be very cumbersome to like design around a battery. So they're like, okay, just split it around SOC in the center and all the components in the center. Then you have battery on the side. So it does that. However, this is one thing that I'm genuinely confused who was the engineer about this, simply because like this is the idea for them. Like they will have docks, they will have controllers, they will have accessory port. That's the side USB-C port. Somehow it took them multiple iterations to realize just use a goddamn USB-C port. First they tried like they had a proprietary port which will only work with their stuff. Then they're like, you know, a proprietary port like this. You will have message like do not connect like, you know, because many phone got fried because it looks like a USB-C port. So you're like, and phone is like, boom. So people are like, okay, uh, and now Asus is like, okay, do not plug it in this. And then they are like, okay, you have USB-C, which can accept charge from a normal without any adapters and all that jazz. And uh, it will not fry your phone, but they will have Pogo pins for communication. Now here's the problem with that. Asus wanted to have an ecosystem, but so far till uh, before this point, every phone they released, uh, it required its own controller, required its own cooling system. Everything was just garbage, e-waste. Because again, the moment you change the phone, this is a throw it away because they could not figure out like it took them so long to figure out do not have garbage like this just have a goddamn USB-C port and use a microcontroller to communicate I'm genuinely surprised like it took them that long and 2018 is not like long ago they did not had another option it's like dude you had that option from day one you had that option it's just like finally they are releasing this and I'm hopeful I'm genuinely hopeful that this cooler will work with future phones and because if they do not do that, the accessories market will never grow. And not to mention it will become just an extra hassle because it's like, yeah, this is amazingly amazing. But it's like, you have to not only buy the super expensive phone, also buy a super expensive cooler that you will throw away the moment you change your phone. You don't want that. Again, same with controller because controller requires like fancy ports. So they're like, bro, just, that's the, that's the one thing that generally pissed me off. It's like, dude, you have engineers, use them. So cooler has four buttons, again, gaming phone, four buttons, extra awesomeness, and uh, it will act as extra input. Be mindful, it may trigger anti-cheat software to lock you out from some e-competition game because it will be like gaming with accessories. So be mindful of that, especially for e-tournament scenario. And does have pro controller if you want to just play and enjoy and all that, that. But all of them are very expensive because again, they are use and throw elements, not like, you know, if you I buy X Xbox wireless controller, I can keep upgrading and like if my phones without throwing away the controller. You can have controller that are working for five, six years or even longer than that so that's why the accessories ecosystem did not grow as they wanted because again they hampered it themselves it's like just give a goddamn normal USB-C component so then the old accessories will work but new accessories will have new features and they're like dude you can upgrade the ecosystem so e rather than ecosystem they created a garbage uh, industry so that's the accessory side of it I'm hopeful this time they have fixed it finally what about the price? Now, price is the part where it's like painful. Everything till this point is just like, you know, it's just an expensive phone which has amazing performance. But here's the deal. Price is not in a vacuum, meaning this is not the only phone out there in the public. So now it's touching what we call uh, or crossing flagship prices. When a uh, rock phone was released, I was shocked to see its price in the early days because it was like comparatively cheap. Now, uh, that made very good sense, but uh, right now having 90,000 rupees or like however dollars that is, is not really that good for gaming phone. Like many people, like not just me, many people like dude for gaming phone, I'm not willing to pay that much. Not because gamers are poor, simply because game, uh, gamers who are like, you know, gamers, uh, generally they have a job. Unless their gaming itself is their job, they will have a second job. And in those sort of scenarios, having a phone that is screaming at them, look at me, I'm gaming. It's not something they want. It's not posh, quote unquote. So it's like, you know, screaming that look at me. It's like, dude, 
tone it down. Like, wh why do you have OLED and you do not have a wireless charging system on it? Why? So this is one of those things where it's like, not real. Now, one core aspect of uh, performance is other phones have catch up. Other SOCs are good. Like, yes, four nanometer is better than five nanometer, but not by that much. Even if you buy Samsung Ultra at this point in time, it's like good enough. The feel wise, basically, uh, you will see, oh, this has the best performance. That is true because you are looking at benchmark. You have phone A, phone B, benchmark go. That's not how normal people are. Normal people is like, is it better than my past one? Yes. Is it so uh, drastically different compared to like other uh, reviewers where like, dude, this is garbage. No, any other phone at this point in time that is of this sort of price is more than good enough. And one thing you have to understand, back in the days when ROG started to come in, Samsung was delaying the 120 release. So it was hilarious, but Samsung's OLED was used in ROG phones and ROG phone was giving on 120 hertz, even though Samsung Ultra phones were at that point in time locked to 60. So that created an issue where it's like, you will know the difference. Whoa, this is 60, this is 120. Like, wow. But now it's like both are 120 and it's like 120 and 160. Does not matter that much. 60, basically the jumps become uh, less uh, perceivable. You're going from 30 hertz to 60, wow. 60 to 120, wow. Uh, 120 to 240, not that much. And it happens in the gaming monitor. That's why like gaming companies are no longer focusing on higher FPS. Uh, uh, they are focusing on HDR. That's the whole thing. So this reality of it, the fact that this has ludicrously high price, it will could lead to what we call low sales, meaning not enough people will buy. That will lead to low profit. Uh, that will lead to price creep, meaning the next time the price will cross that one lakh mark milestone. Stupidly expensive. So. And the reason why it is so painful, it has too many shortcomings for this sort of price. Meaning when it was cheap, it was like, dude, it's a kind of compromised phone. It's like, you know, having a sports car which has thrown out every other thing, basically backseat, every leather, everything they thrown out just to give you best, badass performance on low cost. You'll be like, good, I know what I'm buying, I'm enjoying it. But it's like, if it's costing same as like, you know, a luxury comfortable car and then it's garbage in the inside, you're like, dude, why the hell I'm paying for it? So it has too many shortcomings. Primary shortcomings is like, it's poor waterproof performance for this sort of expensive uh, equipment. If it drops in a pool, it's like, good luck. Hope it uh, does not penetrate too deep, but be mindful at this sort of price, other phones are giving better waterproofing and it does not have good camera. That's, that's genuinely like bad. And again, it was acceptable when phones were cheap, but not at this sort of ludicrously price. And the final nail in the coffin is that company themselves are saying that they're gonna give you two years of OS commitment. Now, is that good? Not really. Simply because while it is true, Samsung in the early days were like flat out ignoring OS updates, but they learned their lesson and they improved it. And they improved it where like, you know, we're gonna give you three years security update, that's it, go home. Then they're like, okay, okay, three years security update plus two operating systems. They're like, okay, you will get one on the purchase and then one year after I will update it. Now it's three OS. Now they are claiming for four years, I for every new phone that they are releasing, they are making it better and better. And not to mention Android is also becoming more efficient at update cycles and all that jazz. So. In that sort of ecosystem, uh, be it Apple, which is genuinely much uh, better, and be it Samsung, which is learning and in actually improving, having a scenario like we are only going to give you two years, it's like, nah, the price price makes it very hard to swallow, so to say. So what about the alternatives? Well, this is the part. Uh, if you want a gaming phone that has like same ethos, where it's like it's a compromised phone, but it has a compromised price, go with Red Magic 7 Pro. And it has almost similar performance. And not to mention, it has cooling system built into it, meaning there is a cooling fan that is built inside. Because the everything is internally done there, it is genuinely much better at dissipating. You do not have a giant fan there. Again, uh, location matters. So rather than going through multiple layers of insulation, if your cooling unit is directly uh, where it needs the cooling, it will be much more efficient. So. That's there, it's much cheaper. And then you have come to the same price, iPhone 13. Now, iPhone is like swag, flat out. Whether you like it or not, it's just like swag. So iPhone 13 you can buy, and not only it will give you swag, it will give you better camera. And in terms of gaming performance, it generally gives you much smoother experience. Not because it has more FPS, smoother simply because it's super easy to just, for any gaming developing studio, just to buy an iPhone and run every game for game testing. They can only do that for one or two Android testing. And if your Android is not selling that much in bulk, they will not do that. So they will always like, you know, Google, like which is the best selling. Uh, they will like, okay, Samsung, this is selling a lot. They will buy one model of that. Uh, let's say this uh, ZTE model is selling a lot. They will buy that. One or two phones, that's that's it. They're not gonna do much more than that. So having uh, niche phones, like uh, be it Red Magic, be it uh, Rock phones, they have to rely on brute force. And brute force is not as efficient as like actually fine tuning things. So you will get much better, smoother experience and camera is like flat out better. Then what about Galaxy S22? It's a bit more expensive, but similar price. And especially if you are trading in your old phone, you will get a much, much better uh, deal. And that point, this will be cheaper. Be mindful, it has a goddamn pen going inside. It still has better waterproofing. How?
and not to mention this camera is genuinely got tear it's like the telephoto on this system will make iphone look like bro it's like why you are stuck in 2010 that's how far apart it is everything else is like especially in video people are saying like we don't like color science I'm like that's up to you but it's not like whoa difference but in telephoto there is this whoa difference is like whoa whoa so flat out and it's a again gaming performance also has that and great all rounder it has wireless charging for many people is like dude i want wireless and again it looks far more sleeker so this is one the whole point of it and you will be able to game well enough in all of them does a uh, rock phone has better performance absolutely does it has better enough to justify this sort of prices no that's the thing the price is not in a vacuum so compared to this compared to this compared to that it's like really not say again i genuinely understand why company wants to make high prices items but it's like bro focus on your goddamn equipment every time every company is claiming one thing every reviewer is claiming one thing every user is claiming one thing please fix your camera it's like how about we don't fix it how about we increase the prices like again at that point in time it's like dude these are much better daily travels much better um fish again if you are very rich you will have uh, you know iphone 13 in one pocket and rock 2 in another pocket but there are only few people that are that rich so that's the reality of it so super price with short life so again at least fix that part that can be done after release it's like yeah we're going to give you four years of update uh, so that's really uh, crux of the matter compared to all these equipments it's really not uh, wise to spend that kind of money again it's up to you if you are like i want the best badass gaming performance go for it but if you're like anything below that anything below that it's like these things are much better option So this was my presentation on uh, basically ROG 6 uh, Pro Max. <laughs> Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friend. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free, and as always, thanks for watching.